It's now my pleasure to, uh, to introduce uh, Victoria Colangelo, who's going to discuss the impacts of changes to wetlands and mitigation banking. Thank you so much. Well, I'm honored to be a part of this very impressive panel. Thank you so much to EgoBot for inviting me to show my perspective as a uh, mitigation bank uh, representative and um, a Florida perspective as well. So a little bit about me. I've been selling mitigation credits since 2004. Um, I've specialized in uh, selling credits. And then most recently, about two years ago, I started selling mitigation banks, the land with the credit. So I've been very successful um, in doing both, uh, connecting the buyers and the sellers of mitigation banks. And then of course, with selling mitigation credits, connecting developers and consultants with the appropriate mitigation options. Uh, so I've had a fantastic uh, career so far, and I'm very, very blessed to be in this industry. Uh, this industry fell in my lap when I was a senior at UCF, and I was called in for an interview. I wasn't even looking for a job. And so I worked my way up from intern to president, and four years ago, I started my own company, um, and uh, it's been absolutely a blessing. So just to give you a little bit of uh, input on how I, my perspective of these policies um, uh, with regulations. We can go to the next slide. So, as you know, um, and as Daniel pointed out in his presentation, uh, the, uh, the new navigable waters protection rule limits the extent of federal regulation, rescinding the 2015 clean water rule that Obama placed. And as you may or may not know, this all stemmed from the 1988 Rapanos versus U.S. ruling, where it was an 18-year court battle, and uh, Justice Scalia and Justice Kennedy both had different opinions. And Justice Scalia um, wanted to regulate more wetlands of the United States. And Justice Kennedy had an approach of, um, I'm uh, Kalia had an approach of reducing the wetland impacts. And hence, there was this ambiguity for so long. Um, and in 2015, Obama was able to put those uh, increased restrictions on isolated wetlands and uh, open waters in the United States. And so now, with this new regulation that just happened in June 22nd, now it's more easier for developers and environmental consultants to be able to have clarity and know exactly what uh, will require federal mitigation and which won't. So, you know, I, I perceived it as a, a good step moving forward and it would increase, you know, the permitting timelines because I've seen it, you know, expand from two to seven years to get, you know, a, a, a permit. And so, um, however, what I've seen and talking with many environmental consultants throughout the state of Florida is that it's taking you know two to six months after they submit their JD request form, which um, whoops, I don't think this link works on this spreadsheet. I thought it would, but um, if you go to that form um, on my website under resources, mitigationbankinginc.com, you can see the form that you can um, download and email to the core and wait on a response and then move forward with your planning. Um, Fortunately for states like Florida, Michigan, and New Jersey, we have state oversight. So regardless, those isolated wetlands are being mitigated um, in the state of Florida. Um, and so that's great. And there's, it's estimated that EPA suggested that there's about 85% overlap. So the state and federal agencies, 85% are um, navigable waters. And so um, it doesn't make much of a difference. And so the 15% or so are isolated wetlands that are still being regulated by the state. Um, I haven't seen much um, less federal mitigation needed yet. Uh, I have about 130 credits reserved right now that are pending closing. And, only, and out of all those projects, only you know, 0.6 credits, one project, um, doesn't need the federal uh, as they anticipated because of this new rule. And I'm sure more will come, but right now I'm only working on, you know, one project out of um, uh, 
about 50 or 60 different projects. So, and that's on the um, east coast of Florida. So anyways, so a lot of interesting um, perspectives on, you know, the WOTUS rule um, and how this will, you know, affect moving forward with permitting. And, you know, um, like um, was stated before, who knows, you know, this is, this is probably to be challenged again. Um, it's going to take a lot of effort and, you know, they're going to have to have a defensible argument, um, require evidence of, you know, how, you know, this would be modified if this were ever to be rescinded again and open up the process. But I'm assured that that wouldn't happen if, even if we started today for, you know, three to four years. So um, a lot of projects are moving fast so they can get grandfathered in, uh, get those JD forms in. And, um, and so uh, that way you are set. All right, next policy change I wanna to talk to you about is specific to Florida. You can go to the next slide. Um, you may or may not live in Florida. You may not, um, you know, be affected, but Florida is one of the uh, prestigious uh, premier wetland mitigation areas in the country. And um, uh, they are currently uh, looking into, and, and we'll know next week uh, if it's approved, to be able to shift uh, the Clean Water Act Section 404 from the Army Corps of Engineers to the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. And what that would mean is um, all projects um, except Section 10 will be shifted over to FDEP to regulate. And so currently the core, you know, is just working on those big priority projects and going to shift everything to FDO, FDP if it's approved. Um, and so that's going to be an interesting um, challenge for us, I think, you know, to be able to have those resources. And um, the DEP is confident. Like I said, they have an 85% overlap. So they're like, we're already working on these projects. Uh, might as well streamline it. Uh, DEP will manage it at first, and then um, once they get the process together, I understand that they'll start flowing it to the five different water management districts in Florida, who um, primarily oversee the wetland impacts uh, for the state side. DEP just does individual family homes and linear projects, so um, I guess they feel like they can put some more on their plate and alleviate the core of those responsibilities. So I think that's really interesting because, um, you know, it may be the wave of the future for other states as well to take back their, you know, regulation so that when these federal uh, nuances happen with isolated wetlands, the state still uh, maintains a regulation over the isolated wetlands and therefore um, they're not just uh, being left out and not being compensated for. Um, mitigation banks will continue to be permitted by the Army Corps of Engineers. They will not go to FDEP. So that was good. Um, and, um, and we're excited for the changes, good or bad. It's going to be interesting. I know Michigan did that, uh, changed over from the core to the, the state's, uh, regulation. And I'm not sure if they were, um, if they've been successful with that program. Um, I, I put in a couple calls, but I haven't heard back yet. And I, I, I'd like to pick their brain on their perspective. And, um, and like I said, New Jersey has a state program, but I'm not sure if they've navigated um, over there as well. So it might be an emerging trend. Florida, you know, of course, is the forefront of the industry because we have a lot of wetlands. Um, and I think that's it. I think, you know, just let me know if you have any questions at the end. And um, thank you again so much for being here and listening to me with my perspective. Great. Thank you, Victoria. Great to have you join us here today.